big O notation, a way to measure how efficiently your code performs as the input size grows. You've probably seen code that works perfectly on small inputs but slows down, crashes, or times out when the input becomes large. Understanding big O helps you avoid slow and efficient solutions and write code that actually scales. It's also one of the most important topics in coding interviews. You will almost always be asked to explain the time and space complexity of your solution and the more efficient your approach, the stronger your chances of passing the interview. In this video, I will break down what big O notation actually means, the most common time complexities you will come across, what is space complexity and rules to calculate big O for any given piece of code. Let's get started. So what exactly is big O notation? Big O is a mathematical way to describe how the performance of an algorithm changes as the size of the input grows. It doesn't tell you the exact time your code will take. Instead, it gives you a high level growth trend. One important thing to note is that Big O is machine independent. It doesn't matter whether your code runs on a fast laptop or a slow server. The growth pattern stays the same. The key variable that drives Big O is the input size n. Now that you understand what Big O notation is, let's go over the most common time complexities you will encounter. Before we dive into common runtime complexities, I want to quickly tell you about algomaster.io, a platform I built to help you master software engineering interviews. Here I have put together a free resource where you can learn and practice the most important DSA patterns that show up often in coding interviews. You will also find resources on system design and other interview preparation topics. With that said, let's walk through 7 common time complexities from fastest to slowest. Constant time. This is the fastest and most efficient time complexity. An algorithm is O of 1 if it performs a fixed number of operations, meaning the execution time does not depend on the size of the input. A classic example is accessing an element in an array by index. It doesn't matter if the array has 10 elements or 10 million. The time it takes to access an element stays exactly the same. Next up is logarithmic time or O of log n. An algorithm runs in O of log n time when every step reduces the problem size by a constant factor, most often by half. This means the amount of work grows very slowly, even when the input becomes massive. The most common example is binary search. Each step discards 50% of the remaining data. Now let's talk about linear time or O of n. An algorithm is O of n when its running time grows directly in proportion to the size of the input. If the input doubles, the number of operations also double. A simple example is finding the maximum value in an array. You start with some initial max, then you scan every element and compare it to the current max. Each comparison is O of 1, but you do it n times, so the overall time complexity becomes O of n. Any algorithm that bridges every element exactly once is linear time. Now we enter the world of O of n log n, also called linear rhythmic time. It's often described as logarithmic splitting with linear merging. Algorithms with O of n log n time complexity combine two behaviors, a log n factor from repeatedly splitting the input and an n factor from processing or merging the pieces. The classic example is merge sort. First, it recursively splits the array in half over and over, touch the log n part, then it merges the sorted halves back together and that takes n steps in total. Multiply those together and you get O of n log n. This complexity is slightly slower than linear time, but it's still very efficient and it's the backbone of many fast sorting algorithms. Next up, quadratic time or O of n square. This is where things start to get ugly. In an O of n square algorithm, the number of operations grow proportionally to the square of the input size. So if you have n elements, you perform roughly n times n operations. This typically happens when you have nested loop, where for each element, you iterate over all other elements. Classic examples include simple sorting algorithms like bubble sort, selection sort, insertion sort. All of them compare or swap elements in nested loops, leading to O of n square behavior. These algorithms are fine for small inputs, but they become painfully slow as n grows. For n is equal to 1000, you are doing around 1 million operations. And if n is 10,000, you are looking at 100 million operations. In coding interviews, and wherever performance matters, you will often want to avoid O of n square and look for ways to bring it down to O of n log n or better. Next, exponential time. Exponential time algorithms usually appear when we try to solve a problem by checking every possible combination. Think of it as the opposite of binary search. Instead of eliminating half the work at each step, you are often doubling the work with each extra input element. This happens in problems where each element can branch into multiple recursive calls. A classic example is generating all subsets of a set, also called the power set. If the set has n elements, there are two raised to n possible subsets. That means just for 30 elements, you are looking at over 1 billion possibilities and for 40, over 1 trillion. This kind of growth becomes unmanageable very quickly. Even a small increase in n makes the runtime explode. But the good news is, that many exponential time problems can be optimized using techniques like memoization or dynamic programming. These techniques prevent us from recomputing the same subproblem, often reducing the time from exponential down to a much more practical polynomial time. 
and finally factorial time this is what you get when an algorithm tries every possible arrangement of a set of n elements the number of possibilities grow faster than any other complexity we have seen even at n is equal to 15 the numbers are already in trillions which makes it completely impractical to compute a classic example of o of n factorial is generating all permutations of a string these kind of brute force solutions are mostly used for very small inputs so far we have focused on time complexity but big o also applies to memory uses and that is called space complexity space complexity tells you how much extra memory your algorithm uses in addition to the input itself. This extra memory can come from temporary data structures like arrays, hash maps, stacks, queues, etc., recursion call stack frames, or intermediate buffers used during computation. Now let's look at popular space complexities you will come across. First, constant space. If you scan an array to find the maximum value, you only store one variable to track the current max. So while the input size may grow, your well, extra space stays constant. Second, linear space. Now suppose you collect all even numbers from array into a new list. If half the numbers are even, that's roughly n by 2 elements, which still counts as O of n space. Next, quadratic space. Storing a full matrix like an adjacent matrix or a dynamic programming table of size n times n takes O of n square space. And next, space from recursion. Space complexity isn't only about the extra data structures you create. Recursion also consumes memory through the call stack. And this often goes unnoticed. Every recursive call adds a new frame to the stack until the function returns. The naive recursive Fibonacci solution branches twice for each call. It takes O of 2 raised to n time, but it still uses O of n space because at most n calls are active on the stack at once. For depth first search on a tree, the stack depth is proportional to the height h of the tree. In a balanced tree, h is close to log n, so space complexity is O of log n. In the worst case, for example, a skewed tree, h is close to n, so its space becomes O of n. Now let's talk about how to actually calculate the complexity of a piece of code. The simplest way is to break your code down into parts and analyze each part separately. Rule 1. Add complexities of sequential operations. If your algorithm performs one block of work after another, you add their time complexities. Rule 2. Multiply complexities of nested operations. If your algorithm has nested loop with the outer loop running n times and the inner loop running m times, the total complexity is O of n times m. Rule 3. Drop constant factors. We can ignore any constant multipliers in a big O expression. Big O is not about exact number of steps. It's about how fast your algorithm grows with input. Whether your algorithm takes n steps or 5 n steps, both grow linearly as n increases. The constant multiplier doesn't affect the growth trend, so we drop constant factors. Rule 4. Drop lower order terms. If your final expression has multiple terms, you keep only the one that grows the fastest and drop the rest. Why? Because as n becomes very large, slower growing terms become insignificant. Let's use this example. Imagine n is 1 million. n is square, which is the dominant term, becomes 1 trillion. Well then, is just 1 million and the constant term stays at 100. At a scale, the lower order term barely makes a dent in the overall growth. So we only keep the term that dominates. I hope this video gave you a good introduction to Big O notation and how to measure time and space complexity of your code. The best way to get better at Big O is simple. Start analyzing the time and space complexity of every problem you solve. It will quickly become second nature and you will feel much more confident explaining it in interviews. If you are looking for a curated list of lead code problems organized by the most commonly asked patterns, do check out algomaster.io. You can watch my full DSN lead code patterns playlist here. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss my future videos. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.